we are hardening our rhetoric, but we are certainly reminding the UK that uh, students, in fact, in, uh, I quoted this example, and I wouldn't mind repeating if you have that extra minute, uh, our generation in India always felt if there is higher education possibility, they would go to the UK. It was Oxford, Cambridge, or LSE, or if you were doing sciences, you would go to the King's College. But today, in our own families, our children prefer going to the USA or to Australia or anywhere else, but not the UK because they feel that prior to uh, having obtained the admission, the kind of requirements for the visa is very cumbersome and they don't think it's helpful at all for a country which, having established such wonderful universities, doesn't incentivize students to come and study there. After all, every student who comes to study is not a job seeker. And you, you always have ways in which you can always send back a student having attained a proper qualification. Many of us who studied there, many of us who worked in Britain didn't want to stay there for long. Everyone wants to come back to. That is one thing. And second, that's regarding the students. Uh, as regards professionals, uh, skilled people who come for completion of projects to have to increase their visa fees or to charge them for skilling your own manpower or to say that, no, uh, this is equivalent to migration of labor, uh, to us sounds like non-tariff barriers in services sector. If there are non-tariff barriers for goods coming into a country, these are essentially non-tariff barriers on people's movements, so people who come with professional skill sets which are not available in your country. So, uh, in a sense, when I rebuke India for these tariffs on uh, China steel, you were able to turn around to me and say, Britain is doing something not dissimilar. It's adding an extra barrier that makes a financial rela relationship between our two countries that much more difficult. No, I don't think uh, you're comparing apples with apples. These are two completely opposite cases. Where we have capacity to produce steel, we do not want dumped steel in our country. Whereas where you don't have skill sets to have people come and do a job and you therefore have them come after winning a global tender, but to stop them just because you do not want them to come and work and do the completion of the project means that the global tendering process itself loses its uh, color and sheen. Competitiveness in services sector is kept in mind when the labor force, the skilled professional force is costed. You know now, 